Hey guys, thanks for buying the Travel Hacking Secrets Demystified course. I really appreciate it. I hope in this short course I can deliver tremendous outsized value for just an hour or two of your time. So first of all, just a little bit about me. I'm 33 years old, from Atlanta, Georgia, I'm based in Mexico City. And the last business I ran was called iChess from 2011 to 2019. My business partner bought me out in January 2019 and in that business we recorded a lot of course content and we also earned a lot of credit card points so I was frequently learning the best way to earn lots of credit card points and airline points and I was learning also how to redeem them in the best way because a lot of the world's leading grandmasters would only want to fly business class costing thousands of dollars and so it was this way that I learned through travel hacking and the points game to book these flights super cheap. And so that business, I scaled it to seven figures. I had a successful exit and I've traveled myself to over 60 countries and have spent uh, at least a year in over five, six countries. So I've traveled a lot myself. So why listen to me? Um, after I sold that business, I continued studying the points game. It's kind of been a hobby of mine for a long time. And this talk will teach you basically everything that I've learned, uh, the most important parts of everything I learned in the least amount of time so that you don't need to hire points panda and that you can just do this yourself. So why should you care about this um you know maybe you don't fly at all and you don't care about this and that's fine but if you fly long distance to usa to europe europe to usa usa to anywhere in asia even once a year flying an economy is absolutely miserable and as we all know uh, these tickets in cash are outrageously priced uh, for a business class ticket you're talking multiple thousands of dollars just to have, you know, 15, 20 hours of more comfort, right? On the other hand, uh, that comfort really matters a lot because if you're flying 32 hours, 35 hours uh, from, let's just say, the southern U.S. to Southeast Asia, there's a pretty good chance you're going to show up at a bare minimum feeling terrible, but possibly even sick. Uh, every time I fly 20, 30-hour flights like that in the economy, I end up getting sick. It's just... People are sneezing and coughing, and it's just a cesspool of germs. So for me, it's really important to fly business class. So fortunately, you can too, right? So people are thinking, oh, you have to be an entrepreneur, have crazy credit card spend. You need to be a millionaire. You need to fly like crazy. None of this is true. Um, another myth that people have is that somehow this is opening up credit cards is going to ruin their credit. Uh, actually, the opposite is the case. It's going to improve your credit. So anyone can play this game as long as you have good credit and you put at least a thousand or two thousand dollars a month on a credit card um, just be, for the reason for that is so that you can hit the minimum spend um, this is kind of beyond my talk but even if you don't spend even that much on a credit card there's a lot of hacks um, like paying your rent on a service called plastic or um, doing paypal payments uh, there's so many ways to just hit the minimum spend on these credit cards, which is typically maybe three or four thousand dollars a month, uh, three or four thousand dollars in a three month period. Sorry. So the vast majority of Americans can play this game if you have good credit and you're putting at least one or two thousand dollars a month, you're in. Um, and if you're not optimizing your credit card strategy, you're just flushing money down the toilet because it's just free money. These credit card companies will give you these massive bonuses worth thousands of dollars. It's going to improve your credit by lowering your credit utilization ratio and your credit, um, your overall credit line. Um, and a lot of you guys don't, don't realize this, but with these points, they'll tell you, oh, a hundred thousand points is worth a thousand dollars. That's only true if you redeem on the portal or for statement credits. You can transfer these points in into various airlines where they can be worth way, way more if you can find these good saver rates. So those are the two things we're going to talk about here. And I just have an example here on the right of how, let me just move the webcam down so you guys can see this in a little bit. I'll just move this here. Um, I got a $7,200 flight for 100,000 points. 
meaning those 100,000 points weren't worth $1,000. To me, they were worth uh, $7,000. It was a $7,300 flight from Mexico City to Bangkok. So I'm going to teach you guys how to get that kind of value per points as well. So if you're not willing to open credit cards, you're not uh, putting any business spend on a credit card, personal spend on a credit card, you don't fly at all. Really, if you're just not willing to open up credit cards uh, or you just don't have good enough credit to open up credit cards, then maybe this talk isn't for you. But if you have over a 600 credit score and willing to open up these cards, then we're good to go. So who can take advantage of this? Uh, I won't spend too much time on this, as I said, as long as you're spending at least one or two grand a month. Um, and also those of you guys who earn a lot of miles from flying uh, can take advantage of this. Those of you who earn lots of miles from shipping, PPC, travel, um, any of those bonus categories especially should be taking advantage of this. If you're spending money on FedEx, UPS shipping, uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, all of these are three or four X categories, travel as well, Airbnbs, hotels, car rentals, hotels. Those are all three or four X categories. If you're not opening credit cards that have these bonus categories and you're putting a lot of spend in these categories, you're wasting money. And also my mom, she gets to a free membership so she can take advantage of this too. So now we're going to move into the easiest part of this talk, which is how to earn points. Most of my competitors for Points Panda, they only do award bookings. They don't do the concierge where they, they optimize your earning strategy. And I'll be honest, there's a reason for that, is that the earning points part um, is a lot more straightforward than how to redeem the points, which is a lot more difficult. But nevertheless, there are a lot of pitfalls. There's a lot of confusion here. Um, the most important thing is not all credit card points are created equally. So Chase, Amex points, and to a lesser extent, City points, they're worth more or less about the same. I would say Amex points are worth just a tiny, tiny bit more, but it really isn't a huge difference. So Capital One points are actually worth a little bit less. Capital One just got into the games, and their points only transfer into the airlines at a 1.5 to 1 ratio. So if they say, oh, I have a 200,000 point bonus, that it actually only equals 150,000 airline points. And there are other points programs as well, such as Marriott um, and the hotel programs such, such as Hilton. Uh, those points are worth even less. They're, they're worth about a third of what an Amex or a Chase membership reward points are worth. So when you're opening up these credit cards, you really need to find out what the points are worth. Don't assume that a credit card that says 100,000 points is worth more than 50,000. While that is generally the case, a great example is the Hilton program. Those points are worth very little. So you may see a Hilton card that says 150,000 points. It's really only worth about three nights in a five-star hotel. It's really not that many points. However, 150,000 Amex points is an insanely high award. Um, they've released that award for the Amex Platinum only one once or twice, uh, and that could be worth as much as $10,000 in business class tickets if redeemed correctly. So the reason that travel hacking blogs and other points websites value these points higher, because you may say, well, why are they valuing if you go on, let's say, the points guy or one mile at a time, they're just two popular blogs. Why are they valuing these points at two cents each? When if you go to the portal or statement credits, you only get one to one and a half cents each, typically 1.25 cents per uh, point is what you get when redeeming these for flights on a portal. It's because of the transfer programs. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later of all the different airlines and hotel programs that you can transfer to. So when you transfer in that way, you're going to get outsized value. And that's why they value these points at about two cents each. So how do you get these credit card uh, points? I'm going to assume that the majority of you guys watching this are not entrepreneurs that are putting crazy business spend on credit cards or corporate frequent flyers that are getting insane amount of airline points as well. But you're just a normal, a normal Joe or normal Jane that, um, you know, you have a regular job, you have some credit cards that earn you bonus spend. 
but you don't um, you don't put crazy amount of money, and that's fine because the linchpin of the strategy is the credit card sign-up bonuses. For all of us living here in the U.S., we have the best credit card sign-up bonuses in the world, starting at 30, 40,000 points, 50, 60,000 points is, is pretty common, going all the way up to 100,000 points or more for certain credit cards, right? So you can just get insane amount of points just for signing up for credit cards. And by the way, I know I've mentioned this already, but opening up credit cards is not going to hurt your FICO credit score. I promise you. It's actually going to raise your FICO credit score over the long run because it's going to raise your overall credit line and also lower your credit utilization ratio. It is true when you sign up because you do something called a hard inquiry. It may ding your credit score for every credit card you sign up maybe two or three points and it bounces right back in a month. So it, it's not really true that it hurts your credit score. Um, I have over a 800 credit score and I open up four or five credit cards a year. So how do you get these credit card points, right? The bonuses are the big ones. Um, credit card non-bonus spend, which is typically one to two points per dollar spent. Um, it used to be more like one point per dollar spent. Now there are more and more cards that are giving 1.5 to even 2x on non-bonus spend. And that really adds up because that counts for all categories, right? And so, you know, the other way is just simply spending on your credit card. You can get anywhere from two, three, five, sometimes even 10 points per dollar per certain rewards categories. But the reward categories are typically two to three X, sometimes more like four X now. And of course, for entrepreneurs, I'm just going to mention this here, even though I know a lot of you guys watching here aren't digital nomads or Internet entrepreneurs like me. But the way a lot of us in this industry earn tons of points is from pay-per-click advertising because $5,000 a month by business standards uh, on spent on Facebook ads or AdWords ad, YouTube ads, Instagram ads, it's not that much money uh, by business standards. And you're getting 4x on an Amex business gold. So just spending $5,000 a month on pay-per-click ads, you're already earning 20,000 extra points per month. A lot of people who do Amazon business also earn a lot from shipping, uh, which is also a 3 to 4x category on either the Chase Inc. Business Preferred or the Amex Business Gold. Um, but don't worry if, if you're not an entrepreneur and you can't take advantage of that, right? Um, for personal spend, like 90% of my personal spend is either travel or restaurants, right? I pay my rent is mostly Airbnbs. That's where I stay most of the year. I'm staying at an Airbnb right now. Those earn triple points. You're in triple the 4x point in restaurant spend as well. So if you're just a regular person with a regular uh, job that pays you a paycheck and you're not earning a lot of airline points from flying and you're not an internet entrepreneur, that's fine. Um, you should still optimize all these things, right? And so you can also earn credit card points sometimes from opening a bank account a mortgage, a line of credit. Um, as of the time of this writing, I don't know which of these promotions are going on, but they're quite frequent. Um, a lot of times, like I earn 60,000 points just from opening a Chase bank account. Um, so you have to look out for these promotions. And one of the ways to do that is just sign up for email list or just keep up with Flyer Talk, the points guy. Uh, we'll talk more about these websites later. And of course, Chase, Amex, City, they all have their own shopping portals and travel portals where they'll frequently offer a much higher multiple if you book through those portals. But you have to make sure that makes sense for you because a lot of times in those portals, um, the cost of travel might be a little bit higher, right? So if you can earn, if, if you're, you see a hotel that's, you know, I don't know, let's say $1,000 for a five day stay, on Hotels.com or Agoda, but it's twelve fifty or thirteen hundred dollars on the Amex portal, then it wouldn't make sense to do the Amex portal just for those extra points, right? Another big shopping uh, opportunity, uh, if you happen to be in the market for a new laptop, frequently with Chase or Amex, I see sometimes they offer ten x points on Apple products, so you might turn a two thousand dollar laptop into 
a 20,000 point bonus, which as far as I'm concerned, that's basically a 10% uh, back in terms of what, what those points are worth to me. So the main thing, the linchpin here is the credit card signup bonuses. Also make sure that you're optimizing your non-bonus spend and your bonus spend for both personal and if it applies to you for your business categories. And if you don't have a business, don't despair. Don't get upset that some people get more out of this game than others. As long as you're spending a thousand or two thousand bucks a month and you can sign up for these cards and get the bonuses, that is the most important key thing. So what about airline points? Uh, this comes to our second strategy. Uh, as you can see, Gollum there with his precious. Airline points are not worth as much as credit card points. Uh, the best analogy I can give you is comparing cash to a gift certificate for the same amount, right? So if you have a $100 bill, okay, you can use that $100 bill to purchase whatever you want. Now, if you have a $100 gift card, then that $100 gift card can only be used in that specific store. If you happen to be wanting to make a purchase in that store anyways, then to you, the $100 in the gift card is worth the same, right? That's why trying to value what these points are worth is so subjective, right? It's very difficult. But at the end of the day, the airline points are not nearly as valued as credit card points because the credit card points can transfer from anywhere to eight to as many as 15 different airline programs, depending on the, the type of point, whether it's Chase Point, Amex Points, City Points, Capital One Points. So airline points are by definition stuck in one airline and are therefore not flexible. Um, nevertheless, okay, you don't want to only be earning as many credit card points as possible. You want to be earning as many airline points as possible because your credit card points are your precious, precious, right? You don't want to use them when you can just use airline points instead, right? For example, say you're looking for a Delta award that costs 40,000 points and you already have 22,000 points. Therefore, you'll only need to transfer 18,000 uh, American Express membership rewards point into your Delta account to make that purchase where previous, if you didn't have those points, you would need to transfer in the full 40,000. So by having lots of airline points, we can prevent having to dip too hard into our stash of credit card points when it comes time to make redemptions. And so, they, the airline points shouldn't be overlooked, right? There's lots of promotions with airline points as well. So how do you get airline points? Uh, just talking about promotions. Yeah, so how do you get these, right? Credit card sign-up bonuses, they're just not just for credit card points. Some are just for airline points, like a Delta card, a Southwest card, a United card, um, many different credit cards offer just airline points. Um, so I know I said in the previous slide that the credit card points are worth more. This is true. So why would you sign up for the airline cards then? Well, there's many reasons. Um, the first it one is simply if you start playing this game, you can only get one credit card sign up bonus per card once every couple of years. Um, after you cancel it, you might have to wait many more years until you're eligible for the bonus again so it's not going to be long before you've already signed up for the best credit cards um, that have the best um, transferable currency bonuses such as from amex and chase another reason is they just sometimes are really good deals you know sometimes i see a deal where it says oh you're getting a uh, hundred thousand british airways obvious or 80,000 sky miles with the low sign up bonus. Hey, that's a that's a good deal even if the points aren't transferable. You're giving me a lot of points with the very low sign up fee. Yeah, let's do it. Um so the airline points are worth something too. Um So yeah, just a lot of times these airline cards have very elevated sign up bonuses with low uh annual fees. And another reason to sign up for airline credit cards is if you don't have status with a certain airline but fly them a lot, you get lots of perks that otherwise you would need status to get, such as a free checked bag, a priority check-in, priority boarding. Um, some of these very high-end cards even get you lounge access to Delta lounges or United lounges. 
So those perks uh, might be important to you beyond the, the sign up bonuses as well. And a lot of time airline credit cards um, can help you reach your status as well by giving you status miles. But that's beyond the talk, uh, uh, beyond the scope of this talk, right? So I don't worry too much about airline status because I'm flying business class for free all the time, all around the world on many different airlines anyways. So status really isn't that important to me, but if it is to you, that's another um, way that signing up for airline credit cards might help you out. So uh, how do you earn airline points beyond that? Obviously beyond fly, uh, you flying cash, right? So not all your tickets are gonna be from uh, points. So obviously when you fly on points, you don't earn points, but when you fly in cash, you earn uh, airline points. Before all these credit cards existed, that was the main purpose of these airline programs. Um, but now the main purpose of these airline programs for the airlines is the money they make from the credit card companies paying them for the points. For example, um, um, Delta Airlines um, earned billions with a B, billions of dollars um, from the purchases that Amex did, made for uh, Delta Sky Miles, right? Um, but nevertheless, you still earn points from flying in cash. You can earn airline points from buying points. A lot of times they have promotions. They very, they don't typically make sense, uh, very rarely, but sometimes you don't have the points that you need. You see a award, let's say with Avianca, um, they're a Star Alliance member for 60,000 points, um, and you don't have the points to transfer, and they're doing a promotion where you can buy those 60,000 points for $900, whereas the cash price for that ticket might be $1,800. So yeah, in that sense, in that in, in that scenario, it would make sense to buy the points, but they, it rarely makes sense. Um, only if you have a specific redemption in mind. So there's also a lot of double dipping and triple dipping options. For example, I just stayed at the Hilton Hotel uh, last week in Bangkok and I earned Hilton points. I earned Delta Sky Miles by putting it into my Delta account and I earned Triple Chase Sapphire uh, awards point as well. And when you're renting a car, staying in a hotel, dining promotions, Airbnb promotions. Yeah, so with Airbnb, I always double dip. Um, I'm going to show you guys here real quick some of the promotions here. So this is just one example here. Um, you earn one mile per dollar spent on Airbnb on top of your credit card points. Sometimes they do three miles per one dollar spent. And for me, when I'm... I spend at least $10,000 a year on Airbnb. Um, these promotions really rack up. British Airways now is offering three avios per dollar spent. All you have to do is click book now and you just go to Airbnb through the portal and you'll not only earn airline points, but you'll also uh, earn your credit card points as well. So that's what I mean by double dipping is there's a lot of these types of promotions. So yeah, when you're renting a car, staying in a hotel, um, Delta has a dining program. I think some of the air, other airlines do as well, where you can earn three, four, five X um, on top of your credit card points by dining in specific places. The Airbnb promotion that I just showed you, there's a lot of these promotions and you should max them out as much as you can because it's just free money and it's gonna get you closer to these redemptions, right? So these alone, you're not gonna earn like a free business class flight just from the Airbnb promotions, but say you're spending $3,000 a year on Airbnb, right? I spent a lot more, but let's just say that's what you're spending on Airbnb. Um, it, you'll get an extra 9K uh, Avios on top of the triple points or, or, or whatever 2X, 3X points we got from the credit card as well. It's just putting you 10, 15% closer to that redemption. So say you have an American Airlines flight you want to redeem with British Airways Avios. When you transfer in, you'll already have a lot of points from these promotions, letting you use less credit card points that you can save for somewhere else. So uh, uh, with this page here, I'm just going to go over this really quick. Unless you're a frequent flyer, this really doesn't matter. But where2credit.com will give you a good idea of where you want to credit your points. 
Um, of course, if you're going for status uh, with one of the big three airlines, United, Delta, or American, you'll want to credit all your all your flights from that alliance to um, to that airline, right? So you get your status. But if you're not, you might want to start considering transferring, uh, crediting your miles to another member in that alliance. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, one of the reasons is that all the three big U.S. airlines, they don't credit miles um, by distance flown anymore. They, they do it per dollar. But some of the other airlines in their alliance do count um, per mile flown. So say you have a really cheap flight to China from, I don't know, West Coast U.S. That was only four or $500 round trip, right? It's, you see promotions like that sometimes. But you actually flew... 14,000 miles round trip, right? So you might be better off accrediting it to uh, another airline. Another reason you might want to consider transferring to another airline is because you have a specific redemption in mind and you want to put all the um, points into that partner. For example, um, Alaska Airlines doesn't uh, transfer from the majority of airline programs with the exception of um, Marriott, but let's just say they don't, right? So the, the last reason you'd want to be careful about where to credit is you don't want to credit to an airline that doesn't transfer, uh, isn't a transfer partner of any of these major credit cards, because then you have two, 3,000 miles just stuck in a program that's not enough to really redeem for anything, and you can't transfer any miles in to come up with the remaining miles. Hey guys, thanks for sticking it out for part one, which taught you guys how to earn the maximum amount of credit card and airline points in the least amount of time. I'm sure some of you guys already knew some of the strategies and then maybe didn't know about some of the other ones, but the point of it is beyond the credit card sign-up bonuses, which is really the linchpin strategy, there's all sorts of other ways to supplement those bonuses as well to earn even more points. So that was relatively the easy part and it's why the majority of my competitors don't really bother teaching people how to earn credit card and airline points despite the fact that it's not really that straightforward, right? But it's relatively easy compared to this next section here which is how to redeem the points and this is where things get tricky um, because if you want to get these outsized value such as flying these exotic business or first class flights or maybe you just want to fly economy for less points you're gonna have to learn uh, how to do transfers into the airlines and not just learning how to do transfers into the airlines we're gonna have to introduce the concept of the airline alliances and what they mean specifically for airline rewards. So anyways, just pay attention to this part. Uh, if you need to rewatch it, rewatch it. Once you understand the concepts, it won't be too difficult, but this part gets a little tricky. So let's get started. So just finishing up here, um, what can you do with these credit card points? Um, so let's just talk about redemptions here. Um, the best redemptions are typically for long haul flights in premium cabins where you can get as much as two to 10 cents per point um, by transferring to the airlines, which we're gonna talk about. We have a whole, like the whole second half of this course is about that, about transfers. Um, acceptable redemptions, oh, also transferring short haul business or long haul economy. Um, you can get some decent value there, not as much as the business class redemptions because in cash, business class is typically, or first class, three, four, sometimes even 5x the price of an economy flight. However, in points, the typical industry standard is it's exactly only 2x the amounts of points or sometimes even less, right? I've seen in United, it costs 17,500 points to fly economy and only 25,000 points to fly business, right? Is the, the difference in points between economy and business in, in the points world is a lot lower. That's why by transferring for 
economy, you don't get as much value, but you can still get decent value. Um, so some acceptable redemptions are booking flights and hotels using the portals, uh, which is basically book your flight here uh, by, it, it looks like kind of like Expedia or Kayak, but within the Chase or Amex system. Um, they'll give you anywhere from one to one and a half cents per point. Um, the Chase Sapphire gives you one and a half cents per point. Typically more around one to 1.25 cents per point is the industry standard. It's not a great redemption, but it is, it is acceptable. Um, especially if you're someone like me, uh, a lot of us in the entrepreneur world, we just have so many points. Sometimes we just have to unload them on an acceptable rate, or maybe we're a little tight on funds and we want to save the money. Um, and you know, these are acceptable redemptions because even though you're only getting 1.25 cents per point, don't forget that the airlines see it as a cash redemption because that's essentially what the credit card companies are doing is just buying you a cash ticket. Um, and so you'll get you'll get airline miles and you'll get status miles as well if you're trying to get airline status. Um, transferring to hotels is okay too. Transferring you can transfer into Hilton, you can transfer into SBG. Well, it's now Marriott. Um, you can transfer into World of Hyatt. Sometimes you can see some decent redemptions here, but most of the time for the hotels that you're actually wanting to stay at, they're not going to be very good redemptions, right? Because you're typically going to be wanting to fly in a typical hotspot tourist destinations, popular cities, and they're just not going to give you a good deal on that. And so then we have terrible redemptions, which are the ones that the credit card companies are trying to confuse you into doing to, so they can save money. And so statement credits are one cent per point. Um, it's okay to do that if you need to unload some points. And one of the most dishonest ways that I think that the credit card companies try to confuse you is by using their gift card, Amazon, and shopping portal. And remember I mentioned the shopping portal earlier to book in cash. I'm talking about using points in the shopping portal. And sometimes they will give you less than one cent per point, which would never make sense to redeem for one less than one cent per point because you can get statement credits for one cent per point, right? So why buy a gift card at 0 0.8 cents per point where you could buy that gift card, a $100 gift card for $100 anywhere else and then get one cent per point? And it doesn't make any sense, but they'll, it's not going to stop them from confusing you, right? Um, they'll frequently attach your Amazon account to your credit cards, pushing you to use um, to use the your points for Amazon, where they're not even giving you one cent per point, just because you're not paying attention, right? And so, fortunately, the people that are doing these things are paying for people like us that are going to get outsized value from these points. So here's a perfect example, right? You land on Chase and they have all these different options, right? Um, you land on the site and they're trying to say, um, oh no, don't, don't transfer. So the only, the only thing you care about is um, this, transfer to travel partners. This is just BS, 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 BS. It's all BS, right? So they're trying to say, oh, buy a gift card, right? No, don't buy a gift card. It's, it's not what you want to do. But they, it's their goal for you to redeem these points in an unintelligent way. Why? Because when you redeem for a gift card or perhaps on the portal or any of these other things, you're probably going to get about one cent per point. However, if you transfer to travel partners like a pro, like me, like us now, they have to pay two cents per point. And for the credit card companies, this matters a lot because they're only getting about 2% more or less, maybe a little bit less for every credit card transaction you do. So the margins are thin and they're going to earn a lot less money off you. Um, but we're going to do it anyways because we're trying to help us out, not help the credit card companies out. Okay, guys, so now we're coming on to the hardest concept of this course, which are airline alliances. Um, and you have to understand what these are and how they pertain to a ward ticket bookings in order to get that crazy outsized value. And I'll explain why later. So, I mean, you may have heard when boarding a plane uh, something about a star alliance or 
uh, Sky Team, One World, when the, um, the flight attendant is making their announcements. And unless you are a status flyer or you're a points geek like me or an aviation geek, you probably have no idea what this means, right? So I'm going to try to fill you in on what these alliances mean and how they pertain to travel hacking and award booking. So there's three major alliances and the very vast majority of the world's biggest airlines are in one of the three alliances. To complicate things even further, a lot of airlines have non-alliance partners as well. For example, Etihad has tons, is not not in any specific alliance, but has tons of non-alliance partners. Qantas partners with Emirates, uh, even though Emirates isn't in one world, and Delta Airlines partners with Virgin Atlantic, even though Virgin Atlantic is not in SkyTeam. So things get a bit complicated. And so what, what are these airlines alliances? Basically, they operate like a legal cartel. Um, they intentionally make sure not to compete on certain routes to keep prices high. And they actually just coordinate pricing, which would really be illegal in most other industries to do that. But the airlines, it's not. Um, and so when these alliances uh, work together, they coordinate pricing, they coordinate routes, um, and they sell space on each other's uh, flights through something called code shares, which maybe you've seen before when you're booking, when you're about to board a flight for one airline, you're seeing uh, on the monitor the different flight numbers for all the other airlines, right? So say you're on an Avianca flight that's a code share for United. United has its own number on there, so it books it as if it was its own flight, but it's actually another airline's flight, right? And so they do these code shares to be able to give you a seamless trip from one part of the world to the other. For example, I don't know, let's just say from Northeast Asia to South America, right? There's no direct flights from Japan uh, to, I don't know, let's say Brazil or Argentina as of the time of me creating this course. So what happens is airlines in the alliance, they'll sell you a whole ticket um, for an entire alliance where your bags go through and everything is coordinated to give you a smoother, a smoother ride. And that's ostensibly why they say they work together. But the real reason that these airlines work together is to make sure that they keep prices high, don't compete too much with each other, and to give, and also for loyalty, right? For, for status flyers, when you get status on one of these airlines, at least on the gold or platinum level or above, then you get gold on all the airlines in that alliance. For example, if you have gold status on United uh, or Avianca, you automatically have gold status on the other airline, which would mean if you're in another part of the world where there's another Star Alliance airline, you would get priority check-in, priority boarding, uh, maybe even an upgrade, priority bag. Um, and they also coordinate lounge access uh, as well. Um, so a lot of the airlines, they don't have a lounge in a certain airport. They'll use a, a lounge from the same alliance. So um, one, one last thing that's not really too important, but I thought I'd mention is these airlines, they're not really friends like because they still compete a lot. And now as these frequent flyer programs are becoming more and more profitable from credit card companies buying the points for people like us, they're starting to compete with each other. Um, for their frequent flyer programs. So they're not BFFs, these airlines, but they do kind of work together. Um, the really, here's the most important key part. <laughs> Sorry, it took me five minutes to get here, but I, I just wanted to give you a background on airline alliances. The most important part of the airline alliance as it pertains to us in travel hacking is that airlines have to sell a certain, or not sell, but give away a certain amount of partner space to other airlines in the alliance. So what that means is when you go on, let's say, United site and you're looking in cash, you're only going to see United flights with the exception of maybe um, if you're flying a very long distance international, the final two hours might be on another partner airline. But for the most part, you're only going to see United flight. If you look at Delta flights in cash, you're only going to see Delta flights with the exception of maybe the last hour or two and a very long flight might be in a partner. 
However, once you go into the award booking engine, you can see all the different award space on tons of different airlines because those airlines have to release a certain amount of award space to other airlines in that alliance. And so because of that, the, the main airline status program that you're looking at, they are not going to want you to book, use their points for their own what they call metal, which is just a fancy way of saying they're with, with their planes. They want you to go on another airline. So if you're on United, they would probably prefer you fly Avianca or Turkish or really any other airline except United. If you're on American site, uh, they would probably prefer you fly Cathay Pacific or British Airways or another airline on the One World Alliance rather than take up space on their own plane. So the airlines play this little game where they're trying to use get you to use their points on any other airline except their own so they don't lose as much money. And therefore, partner award space is often much, much, much cheaper than award space on that airline on the same metal as a frequent flyer program that you're looking at. So I know it was a mouthful. I'm going to try to explain this further and we're going to show some examples together as well. So here are the three major alliances. Uh, Star Alliance is the one I probably use the most and they have a very extensive network. The biggest airlines on here are United, Turkish, ANA, Avianca, um, Thai Airways, Copa, there's a, a lot of very large airlines in here, right? And so if you look at this, um, if you look at any of these airlines here, you can, you can book any airline here, any airline you can book here using the frequent flyer program of another airline, assuming there's space. So then we have Sky Team, which is a bit smaller. Um, the linchpin of Sky Team is Delta Airlines, one of the biggest airlines in the world. Some other big airlines here, Air France, KLM, China Airlines based in Taiwan, China Southern based in mainland China. Uh, let's see some other, uh, Garuda Indonesia is a big one too. So you can utilize the frequent flyer points of any of these airlines, assuming their space to book any of these other airlines. And then One World, um, probably the smallest alliance at this point due to the fact that LATAM will probably not be in this alliance for very long now that Delta has bought a 20% stake. Um, but as the time of this writing, uh, this map is correct. So we have American Airlines, British Airways, both huge airlines, Qantas, Massive Airline, LATAM as well as the combination of LAN and TAM. Um, and Cathay Pacific. Yeah, so there's not a lot of airlines here, um, but they're, they're big ones. Um, so the One World Alliance is very important as well. Oh, so we have also non-aligned partnerships, and the non-aligned partnerships are becoming more and more common, which means these airline programs just choose to partner with whoever they want. So the worst, <laughs> the worst offender here is Etihad, which basically is just partnered up with whoever the heck they want. <laughs> I mean, there's, um, if you look here, a is part of Star Alliance, American Airlines part of One World, Philippine Airlines isn't even in an alliance, neither is Ukrainian Air. And so for a lot of these airlines, for knowing what other airlines you can book an award, it just really comes down to Googling it and also just rote memorization, which sucks, I know. But with time, you'll start to get a better feel when you say, oh, I need to book that airline. Ah, yeah, I might be able to do it. So what does this all matter for us? Um, well, I, I've already been over this, but let's just recap here. Um, I just kind of gave you guys a lot of information, extra information about the airline alliances. But really the key thing here means... When you go to any award booking engine for any airline in an alliance, suddenly you'll be able to see all the award space for all the other airlines in the alliance. Typically, airlines will want you to use your points to book another airline in the alliance or partner rather than booking on their own metal, uh, which is really just their own space on their own airplanes. We take advantage of this to get super cheap business class seats. So many times there are exceptions in actually booking an award seat with the same airline as the award booking program you're transferring into makes sense. 
So no rule is set in stone, but knowing about these partners is crucial. So here we just have a perfect example, right? To fly from Mexico City to London. Sorry for using all the Mexico City examples, but that's where I live, so um, it's what I'm most used to. To to book this flight with, with Delta One uh, for their business class probably would be 120 to 150,000 points. I don't know how much exactly, but booking their partner you can go all the way 16 hours flying 9 a.m. to 6 a.m. the next morning to London uh, with a four-hour layover in Atlanta for 65,000 sky miles, right? So um, it, it, maybe you've heard people joke around about calling sky miles sky pesos and how you can't get a good value out of it. Uh, none of this is really true. You just have to know where to look. Delta is notorious for charging insane amounts of money to fly on their own flights in business class while giving partner space uh, very, very cheap uh, relative to the cost of their own flights. So if you looked in cash, you wouldn't see this flight because it's not, uh, it's not a Delta flight. Well, the Mexico City to Atlanta portion is, but the, the grand majority of this itinerary is not on Delta. So you wouldn't see this on the cash engine. You would only see this on points. So really here, um, if you want to book Virgin Atlantic, you use Delta points. If you want to book Delta, you'd want to transfer to Virgin Atlantic most of the time. There's exceptions. So I, I think you guys are starting to get the, the picture here. Here we have, uh, I wanted to do a, a Star Alliance example as well. Uh, United plays the same little game, right? So here we have another example, Mexico City to Sao Paulo uh, on United. Um, so if you looked in cash, you would only see the top option. You wouldn't see the Copa Airlines option, which is only for awards, right, since it's a partner airline. So you can see here, if you didn't know about points transfers, you might end up booking this using the portal, or even worse, booking the United flight that's 70K points in economy with two layovers, 18 hours, same day, same time, or flying with Copa with only one stop, way more convenient time frame for only 25k points. In this example, actually flying business class with Copa Airlines is actually cheaper than flying economy with United. That's how badly United wants to keep you off of that plane using their points, is they want people paying cash for it. They want you using the Copa flight, which by the way, Copa's business class is, is nothing to nothing special but certainly beats economy and the point is knowing these tricks here you can really get outsized outsized value I mean look at that you can fly 12 hours for only 25k points and that's only possible typically with partner awards but like I said there's always exceptions right so don't hit me up well I found this one flight and it's actually you know the own the airline's own metal is actually a better deal than the partner. Okay, yeah, that does happen, but we need to focus here on the, yeah, we need to focus here on what's gonna typically be the best redemption. So how do you find these award flights? I hate to tell you guys, there's really no easy way except kind of getting a feel for it and memorizing it, and that's why there are tons of companies offering to book your award seats for $120, $150, something like that, just for a one-time fee. So my business model is unlimited, right? You pay one time and you get unlimited credit card consulting, which is the first half of this talk, but you get unlimited flight award booking as well. But maybe you don't want to hire my services. Um, I This is not uh, a sales video. This is a course. So I'm going to have to try to teach you guys how to find these award flights. It's not really easy. You need to have a mental map of the main airline alliances and the non-alliance partners. But once you memorize it and start having a feel for it, it doesn't take that much time. But just to be clear here, there's no Expedia, there's no kayak of award booking space. You have to sign up for these airline reward programs 
and you have to search maybe through three, four, five different search engines, sometimes more. And a lot of times you have to call in as well. I'll talk a bit, a little bit about calling in later. Um, and to make things even more complicated, a lot of times you have to use a third search engine um, because the airline's own search engine isn't good at finding partner awards. For example, if you were looking to book uh, an American Airlines flight using British Airways Avios, you'd actually want to use the Qantas search engine because it gives you a map over the entire month of what's available. Let's, uh, let's go into the next slide here and we'll see why. So British Airways doesn't give you a nice, clean map like this, right? So Quanta shows you one world availability on a nice map like this, showing you what dates are available and what class. It does get more complicated, though, because Qantas has some other partners that British Airways or American Airlines doesn't have, uh, non-alliance partners. But by and large, this map will be pretty accurate. So the first thing you'll want to do is look for the flight that you're looking for. Here I put New York to Berlin. So the majority of those are going to either be with uh, British Airways or American Airlines. Uh, Qantas doesn't fly between New York and Berlin. Um, and it's showing you the, the class, right? And so doing that, we can see which dates are available. And then we go back to British Airways and, and look at the exact date. Otherwise, we'd be clicking the third, uh, then searching for the fourth, then searching for the fifth, then searching for the sixth, because British Airways search engine doesn't show you a whole month like this. So what are the best search engines for finding a word availability? Um, this can change, but typically for One World, Qantas is the best search engine. or uh, the biggest airline in Australia, but you can use it for any One World flights. I've never even flown Qantas. I use their search engine all the time. For Sky Team, Delta's pretty good, even though in recent last year or two, it's, I think they're kind of been intentionally breaking it because of people like me. And Air France is still a uh, one of the best um, search engines to find availability because they have that whole monthly map. For Star Alliance, I like using Avianca's search engine because it can show you over a whole month. United as well. And yeah, so another great strategy, if you want to play the points game, you have to call. And so some people are say, well, how much is my time worth? Like, you're not calling in because of a freak snowstorm or hurricane and you're waiting three hours on hold. Typically, if you go on flyer talk or similar forms, they'll give you a tip on what's the best number to call. A lot of them have this service now where you can call in and if it's busy, they'll just call you back so you can continue about your day and they'll call you when it's your turn. Um, typically, the waits are no more than 10, 15 minutes. Sometimes you get good agents, sometimes you don't. But a couple things to know about using these award search engines is all these different airlines like Delta, Qantas, Air France, Avianca, they have non-alliance partners uh, that other award airlines will not have. So if you're using one search engine to see award space on the other, it's not always going to be 100% accurate. Of course, there's also expertflyer.com, which maybe some of you guys have heard about. It's a useful tool, but its interface is not very user-friendly. It's very advanced, and it doesn't show all award availability as well. Because even though a lot of airlines prefer putting you on a partner award, in some cases, airlines release a lot more award space to their own flyers, um, to their own frequent flyer program, I should say, uh, rather than partners. Singapore Air is a great example of that. They're an exception to the rule. They, they, they don't mind you flying on their own metal with their own Chris Flyer program, which is the name of Singapore Airlines' um, award program. So you, there's never 100%. Just as you see an award space on one of these search engines doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be available for the other airline. So use the search engines. Most of the time it's accurate. Call in, make sure the space is available. Um, and if, they, if, the, if you see it on a website, 
or if you call in and they say it's available, then go ahead and transfer your points. So the truth is, a lot of times you have to call. I'm millennial too. I hate using the phone. I get it. It's not so bad. Uh, I mean, we're talking about something you're going to do maybe a few times a year only to get that awesome business class ticket that's worth thousands of dollars. It's only going to take up a little bit of your time. And if you don't want to do it, uh, there are tons of companies like mine that either will do it on a one-off basis. They'll maybe charge anywhere from $100 to $200 for the booking. Uh, or there are companies that do unlimited like mine as well. So it's up to you what your time's worth. But like I said, it's not so complicated once you get a feel for it. So calling in uh, needs its own slide. Um, young people like us, we don't like calling in. Uh, even the most hardcore, advanced, expert flyer user who spends all day on flyer talk has to call in. Simply because many of the best deals on partner airlines simply don't show up on the search engines. Um, the, the booking award and using these award search engines, you'll find they're a lot buggier and a lot less intuitive and they crash a lot more than the ones that they use for cash. They're not that great. And so a lot of times you need to call. Um, Flyer Talk, as I said in the previous slide, they'll give you tips on what's the best hotline to call with the lowest wait times. Generally, the agents are helpful, and sometimes they're not. You know, if it's late at night, you might get uh, sent to an outsourced call center where it's a new person who's not getting paid too much and really doesn't know what they're doing. You just hang up, call again. Um, but typically, they'll be able to handle your requests on the first time. And I've been in this game for a couple of years. I've noticed the agents are getting better at this game. So when you call in and you're asking about all this obscure stuff, they'll be able to help you out. So, another really important thing, uh, not all seats are created equally. When you are searching for awards, you need to check the type of plane, right? And let me just kind of go into it here. I'll jump back to this slide in a second. So, the best site by far to use when trying to figure out what kind of seat a plane has is Seat Guru. Sometimes for some Asian airlines, uh, they're not on Seat Guru. There's a couple other competitors. You can look it up online. But seeing the type of plane is super, super important. So as you can see here, the A320, A these three planes, the A318, the A320 for Avianca and the A321, they're going to have recliner seats. And these are the types of seats that... Um, Maybe you like, they're kind of like U.S. domestic first class or recliners, but they're not lay flat, right? And so the airlines aren't going to charge you more money for an award on a much nicer lay flat seat. And you see the A330 has what's called reverse herringbone seats, which is basically your own little pod. In my opinion, that's a massive upgrade compared to um, just those recliner seats. So the difference between flying 12 hours on an A320 in business class versus an A330, it's huge. Same thing on their Boeing jets for Avianca. They offer uh, these very modern lay flat reverse herringbone pods, right? Um, not that flying on a recliner seat is that bad, but if you're paying this kind of money, you might as well try to get a get a good seat because a lot of times airlines especially for kind of like the five six hour range they'll have three four flights a day with a smaller plane like let's say this Embraer uh, jet I'm not sure quite how you pronounce that <laughs> that plane it's a Brazilian company these are just recliner seats they're okay but they're not they're not as high-end as these um, seats on a Airbus A330 or the Boeing um, 7, 787 Dreamliner. So another, sometimes they have two different layouts with the same plane. In that case, I'll tell you guys another cool trick. You can try Expert Flyer and you can also try um, just going into the airline's website and act like you're about to book and see if you can't get to the airline booking page at the very end without having to pay yet 
and maybe it'll show you how to where to select your seat in business class and you can see what the layout is and match it to to one of these sites so really the mo most narrow body planes only have recliner seats the most famous airplane and the one you probably fly most of the time is the Boeing 737 and also the Airbus A318, A319, A320, A321. They're basically the same plane, just you know, made in different years, uh, which is the main competitor to the 737. The larger, medium, and wide-body plane, such as the 777, the Boeing 787, the Airbus A330, and the Airbus A350 typically have better lay-flat seats. And like I said, they're not going to charge you more money for choosing this bigger plane. So you always want to make sure to see what kind of plane you're choosing. Um, you can just type in the plane name, airline name, and then the word seat guru uh, into Google to see what kind of plane, uh, plane you're looking at. Um, so in 95% or 97% of cases, really, the 737 and the A319, A320 are going to have these recliner seats like the one you're seeing right right here on on this page right so this is so these are recliner seats and actually this is from my Instagram taken one time when um, I was expecting a lay flat seat and they changed out the plane at the very last minute and that happens too uh, sometimes They'll just change out the plane and you'll get a crappier seat than you were expecting. And you'll be upset, but there's nothing really you can do. They're, they don't, you're, they're not entitled uh, to a compensation for a putting you in a recliner seat when you thought it was going to be lay flat because of the last minute. Um, I guess they call it an equipment change. So always check the schedules, right? So for me, for example, um, Mexico City to New York City uh, with Aero Mexico. They have six flights a day. Five of them are with these types of seats, the recliner. They have one a day in a super brand new plane that has really, really nice seats, uh, the reverse herringbone style. Um, they Delta, Aero Mexico, Air France, uh, all the partners, they don't charge more for taking that really more comfy, um, more comfy flight with a nicer seat. So it's up to you to check that. And just one final thing here before I move on to the next slide. The very, very, very vast majority of flights are on narrow body planes. Um, there's few that are on medium and uh, even large body jet, like the super jumbos, like the 747 and the Airbus um, A380. So you need to check that, right? You need to check to make sure. Um, when the flights get longer, like those to, from Europe and to Asia and things like that that are over six hours, then it becomes much more common to use medium and wide body planes, not just for the lay flat seats, but because those planes have a longer range, right? Uh, the 737, A320, they can really only go about five, six hours before they need to refuel. <sighs> So to be a points pro, you always want to check with various partners to see who's offering the best deal. It's very frequent that in each alliance, one partner might offer a seat at 50k points and the other one's offering the exact same flight for 90k points. Happens all the time. Other times, maybe the two airlines are offering the same amount of points, but one of them wants to charge you $300 in taxes or whatever. And the only other airlines charging you five dollars in taxes. This is very common too. And this is what being a travel hacker is all about: is finding which airline is going to give you the best deal. And so, as I mentioned before, your credit card points, they're your precious, precious. Always try to burn your airlines points first if you can avoid having to use too much of your transferable currency credit card points, right? And don't forget to check Expedia or Kayak to see if the cash price makes sense. Um, you have to put this all into account, right? So check check quick on Expedia, Kayak, whatever your favorite engine is. See what the flight's costing that day. Subtract the copay portion from the airline ticket. For example, if the ticket you're looking at is 55,000 miles plus $300 and the cash price is $2,000, um, when figuring out how many points 
uh, per what value you're getting, um, how many points per cent or points per dollar, you need to subtract that part out. Um, and don't forget as well when you're booking in cash, you might get uh, 2x, 3x, maybe even 5x with the Amex personal platinum points for a cash flight and you're going to get the airline miles as well. So business class flights have been going down in cash. They're still pretty expensive, but flying uh, from US to Europe or US to uh, even all the way to Asia for less than $2,000 round trip, it's becoming more common. So if you see, oh, wow, it's an amazing flight, like maybe you might, maybe it's only $1,700 in cash and maybe you can afford it and it might make more sense to just book that business flight in cash or consider a premium economy as well. Um, you have to look into these things and kind of decide, right? Um, so always check popular blogs like Flyer Talk, The Points Guy, One Mile at a Time, and of course Points Panda. We're just getting it off the ground as of the time of this writing, uh, focusing more on my premium service rather than the blog and social media. But uh, probably by the time you're watching this, there's going to be a good amount of content on my blog. And airlines frequently run sales uh, on points uh, that they'll they'll do you know some flights really really cheap, especially domestic flights. Like sometimes I see American or Delta offering a flight from I don't know let's say Chicago to Miami for five six thousand sky miles in economy when it's typically double or triple that. Um, credit cards they also frequently um, do transfer bonuses. Sorry, I'm just jumping back slides here a little bit. Um, so this is actually from the American Express screen. You'll see they're doing two bonuses right now uh, when I copy and pasted this um, photo. Um, Life Miles has got a 15% bonus and Air France has a 25% bonus. So I would have never recommend <laughs> transferring points in just because they have a bonus. But if you just so happen to be looking at an award redemption during that time, these bonuses that American Express, Chase, Capital One, and City run from time to time, sometimes change the math, right? Where it would have made sense to transfer to one airline, but because you're getting a 25% bonus on, let's say, Flying Blue here, um, just kind of point this out here, um, here and here, sometimes the math changes. So you have to take that into consideration as well. So yeah just always subscribe to these different um email lists blogs keep up stay informed find out t about tips uh sales on cash fares sometimes they even have air fares um where you can fly from us to europe or asia and business class for a hundred dollars or something sometimes the airlines honor these air fares sometimes they don't um, I don't really recommend doing that because they might cancel that ticket just before your your actual flight. But they, there are these other hacks as well. But the main way your friends and the people you see in these tickets are getting into these seats are with points. And not just points, but transferring these points into the airlines and taking advantage of partner, uh, Alliance Partner Awards. So uh, now we're just going to jump into some real life examples together and I'm going to show you guys just what the credit card portals look like, what Chase looks like, Amex looks like. Um, maybe I'll jump into some of the airlines as well and we'll just kind of hang out, click around a little bit. And so for some of you guys who are kind of more hands on learners, maybe this section kind of showing some real life examples will help you guys out a little bit more. Hey guys, so I'm going to go ahead and sign into Chase and American Express uh, and Capital One as well and show you guys what the transfer area looks like. So I'm logged into Chase now and this is the portal. If you have a Chase card, you'll be familiar with this area. As I told you, this is all BS. We're not really that interested. Well, maybe you want to check rewards activity, right? So this is what you're most interested in, is the transferring to airline partners. And so here we have the partners that I'm, I've saved the number. I'm not going to show you it because it's my frequent flyer number. These programs are sensitive information. But here you have the, the ones I transferred to before at least one time. And here are ones that you can add. So the way that you would simply add it 
is um, right. So the first time that you add points, you're going to have to sign up for the program for the frequent flyer program, which Points Panda does for you automatically with your personal information, um, and then just enter the ID number here. And once that's done. Once the airline program's added, it's very simple to add points, uh, transfer points. You just put the number in here, you hit continue, and so on and so forth. And then uh, the airline points should show up within 24 hours or so. Sometimes it's instant, sometimes it takes a day or two extra. One thing I haven't talked about, unfortunately, sometimes you find the perfect award and then it disappears on you. Um, a day or two later once once the points actually post. There's nothing you can do about that. Once the points are there, you'll have to find an alternative date or figure something else out. And once you transfer the points into the airline program, you can't transfer them back out. So I'm logged into American Express. Uh, it's just stuff is in Thai because I happen to be in Thailand right now. But um, it's the same thing. You just log into your American Express and you hit find the area where it says transfer points. Actually, you know what? I may not be logged in right now. Let's see. So now I'm logged in and I went to the transfer area where you have all the different um, airlines that you can transfer to. Um, I'm only going to scroll up to here because up there it has some kind of personal um, frequent flyer information uh, for the ones that are already linked. So as you can tell, there are tons of different programs. Here are the ones that I haven't used on this account specifically, but there's other ones up there. Transfers are pretty much the same as Chase, Capital One. Um, you just uh, select the card holder that you want to transfer to. It asks for a little bit more information, you transfer it in, right? But you need to create your frequent flyer account for that specific airline first. So in this case, it'll show you, um, you know, the four digit card on the front bag. It'll ask for a little more information to link the account, but you guys get the concept. And so what you're always looking for here when you log into American Express is transfer, transfer points, right? So American Express has some great transfer partners and I've used a lot of them. Highly recommend that's the way that you use your points is hitting transfer. So um, I have a Capital One and City account too, but I don't want to waste time showing this. You can Google how to get to the transfer area of your credit card program. Just be aware that not all credit card programs um, have transfer partners, right? So Capital One just recently added transfer partners. The one that have transfer partners right now are American Express Membership Reward, Chase Ultimate Rewards, um, City Thank You Points, um, Barclays has a program as well, and uh, Marriott, formerly as SPG. So you'll want to make sure when you're signed up for credit cards and you want to play this game that they have transfer partners. For example, Bank of America's credit cards that have points don't have transfer partners, at least as of the time of this video. So that's kind of how you get into the section there. I think you guys get the idea. You sign up for the rewards program you're interested in. You add it. You add the loyalty program to your... Um, to the Chase, American Express, or Capital One, whatever card you have, and then you transfer the points in. So let's also take a look a little bit at search engines, and let's just have a little fun and play around, and I know the part about alliances and stuff was probably giving you guys a huge headache, so maybe if we kind of go and, and play around, maybe it'll click a little bit better. So now I'm in Delta's search engine and I just assume that let's say next March I want to go from New York to Paris. Um, as you can see, so in this case it's not such an extreme difference, but you can still see that they would prefer you fly with Air France and save 5,000 points than fly on their own metal and have to pay 5,000 points more. In most cases, it's more extreme than that, right? So Air France is part of Sky Team, and so that's why you can book, uh, book it using Delta Points, because it's part of the same alliance. And so here you have the type of plane, and remember what we said earlier, um, let's just go see through 
Air France. Let's type that in. Okay. So when booking these, these flights, you'll always want to check what kind of seat you're messing with. So unfortunately, we're not really sure here because that plane has many different types of layouts, but it would appear the majority of them are pretty much open suites or reverse herringbone seats. So you have nothing to worry about. You know you're going to get a nice seat. So you could select that flight or you could also fly with Delta. But let's see what happens when we click in cash. So as you can see here, um, actually, funny enough in this case, I wanted to show you guys how partner flights disappear in cash. But in the case of Delta, they don't disappear because Delta has a code share on these flights. So it's actually um, a Air France operated flight with a Delta code share. Code share. But if a partner is not code sharing on that flight, you, it would disappear. Um, either way, you can see the outsized value you can get from using points. Um, remember, when we're using the portal, um, we're only going to get uh, maybe one or two cents per point, where here in this case, we would get about 10 cents per point, um, being that the one-way business class flight is about $8,000, even though that number is kind of made up because they're punishing us for flying one way, which is kind of another story here. So let's uh, jump to United's site here, and I'll show you more of what I'm talking about here. I think United provides a better example of how the award flights disappear when you look in cash. But, for example, let's go, let's check uh, kind of where I'm headed to next. I already booked this ticket, um, the Singapore points, so I just was looking here. But let, let's just pretend I'm, I want to fly from Chiang Mai to Manila on November 20th. So here we are, and these are flights that are operated by either Thai Airways or Singapore Airlines. Um, this is another thing you want to watch out for is this mixed cabin thing. Sometimes they'll try to sneak in an economy flight uh, in your business awards, so watch out for that. But and this is actually this is a great example here to show us a couple of things. First of all, it shows us that with the United looking at points, we can book flights that we otherwise couldn't book. Um, and so that's one important thing. The other thing I want to show you guys here is really cool is look here how little difference in price is from economy to business class. So that's why when I say to people that I can get better value if you want to fly business, because the economy awards almost the same price. And you'll see this happen a lot. You'll see it happen a lot. And so that's why the rewards are best spent for business class. But if you want to save points, save the points, no problem. But as you can see here, um, these... Flights are almost the same cost in business, so you might as well fly business, right? So here's something cool to look at. Remember, I was telling you guys always to take a look at the type of plane. Um, I'm not going to waste time going back in the seat guru, but I know the 777 and the A330 are both um, uh, wide body jets, or medium body jets. So I know the seats are going to be at least angle flat, if not completely lay flat. So that's what we're looking for, right? Um, which is actually <laughs> using such a wide body jet for a sh only an hour flight is quite unusual. Um, the reason for that is just because there's just so much traffic between Chiang Mai and Bangkok. They need to use uh, bigger planes. Uh, typically for such a short flight, you would see a smaller plane. So like I said, you always want to sit here and look through the planes and see, you know, what the plane is looking at. But Let's just say if we try to book in cash, what would what would happen here? So funny enough, actually, once again, the flights actually are bookable um, since United Code shares on here. So I, I guess it's kind of beyond. It doesn't really matter that much. the The point is the the award partner flights are the most important way to get outsized value. Um, so you can see in business that flight would have been uh, 1544. So let's say we had booked that flight with um, 
Chase's portal, right? So let's just do 15. Let's say you have a Chase Sapphire Reserve uh, and you got 1.5 cents per point. It would have costed you 102,933 points. Whereas by transferring to United, you could get that flight for 25,000 points. It's 75% cheaper by doing a transfer. And so let's see, 1544 divided by 25,000. We're getting 6.1 cents per point, right? So when I'm saying I can get you 2, 3, 6, even 10 cents per point, that's what I mean uh, doing airline transfers. Hey guys, cool. So I finally found an example of when airlines are part of the same alliance, but they're not code sharing, how you'll see flights uh, in awards that you wouldn't see um, when you're just looking in cash. I just did some by sheer coincidence. Um, they showed up, but that's actually becoming more and more common how airlines can book other airlines flights um, directly on their website that are part of the same alliance. It, it used to not be that way, but let's just say we're trying to go from Atlanta to Istanbul uh, in a couple of weeks, right? So if you look here in cash, uh, you can really only see uh, Lufthansa uh, flights. Um, those are ones that code share with uh, United, but you're not seeing the direct Turkish flight. So if I switch to award travel, And here we go. You'll see this one here. You can fly direct from Atlanta to Istanbul on a, on a 787 Dreamliner, which typically has very good seats. You have to check for 70K points. So I wanted to kind of go over some one world availability as well since we went over united which is a star Alliance partner and delta which is a sky team partner but unfortunately the british airways website seems to be down or at least their award booking engine which is super common uh these award booking sites are super buggy compared to um the um, airline, uh, the cash booking part of their engines, it's just the way it is. But let's go and show you why Qantas is the best search engine for using one world availability. So say I want to go from Seattle to Barcelona on February 20th. British Airways doesn't have a map like this, right? So say I want to use British Airways points, uh, American Airline points, Asia Miles, or any other one world partner. I can see here quickly what kind of availability is available on any given day. Like I said, this isn't completely apples to apples with another Alliance airline because it could be that some of these availability is with non-Alliance partners that are only partners with Qantas and not partners with some of the other um, airlines in, this, in that Alliance. But it's mostly accurate, right? So we can save a lot of time by using these search engines, seeing what's available. Um, so for example, here we see all the different options, economy, premium economy, business, etc. And then we can use that information for um, to book on another One World Airline. So 90,000 points. Seattle to Barcelona, that's pretty pricey for business. I wouldn't want to make that redemption, but it's possible British Airways is offering it cheaper. So that's about it. I guess you guys get the idea here. You just have to click around, play around, see what's available, know where the best um, search engines are. Don't forget about Expert Flyer as well. Check the different search engines. Know who's a lot uh, which alliance is working with which but it, it's kind of just clicking around and, and seeing what's available it's not that complicated it's a little bit time consuming but the reward is you'll be able to find these flights a lot cheaper and um, this is actually a great example because I had a client needed to fly Seattle to Barcelona um, Qantas is charging 90,000 points with one layover whereas I found the Sky Team award with Air France 
was only charging 55,000 points, ironically enough, for their own metal, <laughs> despite the fact I've been telling you guys that um, flying on an airline's own metal typically doesn't make sense. Uh, in some cases, it does. So as you can tell, there's different rules or guidelines, but they're off often frequently broken. So you just have to kind of get a feel for it. And w like the more bookings you do and the more playing around with it you do, the more intuition you'll have when you see an itinerary on kind of knowing, oh, that I know, I know where I should book that. I know which, um, which award program offers me the best deal. And it takes a little bit of time, um, and maybe you don't <laughs> want to take up all this time. So that's why services like Points Panda exist. But as you can tell, this isn't, it's not advanced, you know, um, rocket science here. Uh, you can do this on your own. Um, that's why I'm not really charging that much for my service, just a few hundred dollars for a full year, because it's, it really isn't that hard. You can do it on your own, but it is time consuming. So you need to take that into account on whether it makes sense for you to learn this game. But, you know, you can spend 100,000 points on a $1,000 flight if you don't know what you're doing, and then you can use 100,000 points to book two flights worth $3,000 each if you know the transfer partners and where to go. So by not booking correctly, you can lose out on thousands of dollars of redemptions, especially if you like flying in premium cabins like premium economy business and first class Hey guys, so I hope you guys like that quick demonstration. I know that just barely touched on what the kind of airline award booking engines look like, but as you can tell, they're not too different from a cash booking engine. The only difference is a lot of the time partner awards that otherwise wouldn't show up when booking in cash uh, do show up, <laughs> even though by total coincidence every example I looked at um, happen to also be a code share. But the, the main purpose of it was just to show you guys um, how to search for awards and how many points they are. And I wanted to show you guys as well how little of a difference the cost is between economy and business class when booking with points, which is how you can get such outsized deal. So there's a lot of stuff beyond the scope of this talk if you're interested in, in going farther down the rabbit hole, right? There's only so much I can cover in an hour or two. Um, round the world tickets are a special kind of award that you can only typically book over the phone. And it allows you to visit six, seven destinations almost for the price of just a round trip ticket. Um, there's a lot of archaic rules you have to call the airline, but say you're taking a sabbatical and you want to visit seven or eight different cities, there are things called round-the-world award tickets that let you do five or six legs in business class for exceptionally few points, sometimes as little as 150 or 200,000 points for five or six destinations. I'm not going to go for that here. It's too complicated. I also didn't really talk much about hotel transfer programs such as Hilton, um, uh, Hyatt Rewards, and Marriott Bonvoy. And the reason for that is simply transferring to hotels just doesn't really give you that good value. Sometimes it does, um, but it's beyond the scope of the talk. And typically, I'm really focusing on helping out people who just want to use business class, long distance, lay flat seat awards because that's where you can get the most value. But you can transfer to hotel programs as well. I did briefly mention it, and it might make sense for you, it might not. I'm, I'm not really sure, but it's beyond the scope of this talk. And sometimes there are like hotel packages, cruise packages on points. You These can be pretty complicated. <laughs> Sometimes you can even transfer a certain amount of um, points to get different types of po of another type of points to book flights. Um, every once in a while, you can get good deals. I have a client that had a good deal from these hotel packages or cruise packages on points, but also beyond the scope of the talk. Um, and of course, I didn't talk about all the other perks that you can get with a credit card. Priority Pass can get you into tons of different airline lounges. Um, American Express's Platinum Card can get you into the Centurion lounges um, when you have a top Delta Reserve or a United, their top card, you can get into those lounges. Um, 
some air, um, some credit cards give you elevated hotel and rental status. For example, my Amex Platinum card gives me Hilton Gold status, which I use to get free uh, breakfast and lounge access when I was in Bangkok a couple weeks ago. And there's other stuff like buyer protections, all sorts of stuff. It's just beyond the scope of this talk. I'm really just focusing on how you can get the most amount of credit card and airline points in the least amount of time, spending the least amount of money to get them and how to redeem them as efficiently as possible. So just a normal Joe, normal Jane, earning just spending just a thousand or two thousand dollars a month with decent credit can sign up for these cards and then use the bonuses on these cards plus a couple of other strategies to optimize their spend to get on that business lay flat flight. I'm just trying to show you guys anyone can do it. So finally, um, I do have a confession. Uh, we are going to talk just a little bit about my business and whether it makes sense for you or not. Um, this is a course. It's not a sales video. I hope I gave you guys a lot of value. I just would appreciate as well if you guys could hear a little bit about my business and whether it makes sense for you. So I just started Point Panda not that long ago. I've been doing this unofficially for friends uh, for a very long time. Um, as you can tell, like the earning credit card points part is not too difficult, even though you can benefit from having a concierge. But transferring into the programs and finding the best deals can be quite the headache. Um, so maybe some of you guys are intimidated by this or don't have time. Maybe you have kind of like, oh, I get it, but I don't have time to figure this all out. I just want someone to do this for me and to get me in a lay flat seat as quickly as possible. So I have a new business model that's different from my competitors. I don't I, I found the problem with my competitors is they just do one off award booking. So you contact them and say, hey, I have 100,000 chase points or I have 100,000 Amex points. Um, what, what do I do? I need to do this and that. But I felt like for a lot of beginners, they don't really know what kind of points do I need? Uh, how do I sign up for to get these points? Where do, you know, it, it's a long process to even get to the points, get to the point, <laughs> get to the point where you have the points that you need to do the award booking in the first place. So I realized an unlimited model where I take care of you from A to Z or we take care of you from A to Z is a lot more attractive. So what I do, what we do is we'll take a look at your business and personal spend and we come up with the best strategy to earn the most amount of points in the least amount of time, spending the least amount of money as well. And then when it comes time to book and you're ready and you know which flight you want to take, um, I will handle that completely for you. Um, I use a PCI compliant certified system to get down all your personal information and credit card information so you can be in as hands-on or ha hands-off on it as you want. Most of my clients, they don't really care. They think this is too complicated. They just sign up for the cards and enjoy the lay flat seats across the ocean to Europe and to Asia, and that's fine. You can do that. If you want me to sit on the phone with you over Skype and we book it together so you can just do this for one year, um, that's okay too. Like I'll be happy to train you so you can fire me. I mean, I'm not in this just for the money. I really am in this because I want to teach people how to do it and I want everyone to experience the awesome pleasure of being on a long distance business class or first class flight rather than being stuck in economy people sneezing, coughing, it's gross, you can't move, you know. I don't know about you guys. I'm not very picky when it comes to lodging. I'll happily stay in a $40, $50 Airbnb as long as the hot water is okay, the AC is okay, and the mattress isn't too hard, right? But when it comes to flights, I'm squirmy, I'm squeamish. I, get, I, I can't stand being stuck in a tiny seat. So this is very important to me. And maybe you guys feel that way too, but... I guess I'm pretty well to do for someone my age, but I'm not a millionaire. I'm not even making six figures. So I don't have um, the ability to buy these five, six thousand dollar tickets in cash. And most people don't. So you can do this on your own. Uh, if this talk was elucidating to you to be able to do this on your own, all the power to you. I'm really happy for you. If this all seems kind of intimidating, you might want to consider our service. So 
the normal price on it that I'm going to be charging is just under a thousand dollars. But because my business is kind of new and also as a thank you for purchasing my course, I will give it to you for $495 for the first year. And so that price, it has some conditions. I do want you to give me feedback on how the service is doing. And if you sign up at that price to just give me your word that you would also do credit card signups through me so I get a little bit of affiliate commissions um, to make up for the very low price that, that I'm offering it at. Also, I'm doing a 90 day money back guarantee. So if you're not happy with this, uh, you have a full 90 days to get your money back. I have very few people hit me up uh, for a refund. But if you're not happy with the service or if I just can't help you, like you don't have as good a credit as I thought, or maybe you can't get credit cards or you don't want to open them, no problem. I'll give you your money back. And so, as I was saying, I've refunded countless people because they weren't a good fit. So, I, I only want to work with people that I know that I'll be able to really get them in those uh, business class seats. So, I'm going to give you guys some classic buyer examples here to see if you're a good fit or not. Um, if you, one of these sounds like you, you might want to consider signing up. If not, Maybe it's best not to sign up and, and not, you know, waste each other's time if you got bad credit and can't sign up for cards, if you never fly, if you spend almost no money on credit cards, if you're not a U.S. citizen um, or a green card holder, you can't get the U.S. cards, then let's let's not waste each other's time. But um, if you can't, if you do fit into one of these, I promise I can make a lot of magic for you. So here's some classic buyer examples. Perhaps you don't know anything about this game but you have good credit, willing to open cards, um, and ready to fly around the U.S. and the world in business class for free all the time while improving your credit. Or maybe you just fly in business class once or twice a year for the photos to make you appear more baller than you actually are. I say, don't worry, your secret is safe with me. You know, you want to get that cool first class photo for the Instagram. You don't have to tell anyone you did it on points. <laughs> we won't say anything, right? So, you know, perhaps you understood the majority of what I covered in this course. You were like, oh, airline alliances, okay. Um, these these tickets show up only when booking awards, check the different engines, okay. Uh, but you just don't have time. And you're like, dude, this, I don't have time to do this. I need someone to handle this for me, even though I understand it. That's a great client for me as well. But if you have bad credit, unwilling to open credit cards, or you are kind of a points geek and you've already like maxed out all the bonuses and spent all the money and there's no way I can get you further bonuses and some other cases, you might not be a good fit. So here's how it works. Um, this offer is only going to stay open as long as this page stays open. So once you close it, you will not be able to get that price again. Once you purchase Points Panda, we'll have an initial call to qualify and see if you're a good fit. Um, if not, I will provide an immediate refund. Even if you say no, keep the money. If I can't help you, I'm not keeping your money. So if we decide you qualify, we're going to come up with a strategy to earn you the most amount of points in the least amount of time based on your dream redemption. So I'm going to find out about your personal spend. I'm going to find out about your business spend if it's applicable. I'm going to find out all the different ways that I can figure out how to earn you the maximum amount of points. And when it comes time to do the award booking, I'll sign up for the award programs for you. I'll sign up for everything for you. I'll book the flight for you. All you need to do is transfer the points in um, into the program that I tell you to, which might take two or three minutes. And that's it. Just show up to the airport and enjoy your flight. And once again, if you're not satisfied with my service, uh, typically I offer only 30-day guarantee. But since you've already given me a couple dollars for this course, I feel it's built a little bit of trust between us. I will offer a full 90-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked. Okay, so you really have nothing to lose on it if you want to give it a try. And I hope to see you guys. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this course. I really appreciate you guys sticking to the end of this. I love talking about this stuff, but... Uh, I know some of you guys um, 
find this stuff exceptionally boring, uh, but stuck through it anyway. So I really appreciate that. Um, if you want to connect with me, here are my social media accounts. Um, I'm most active on Instagram under uh, this one here. Um, it's, it's just Instagram.com, StreetCredFred. These other accounts, I'm just getting off the ground. Like I said, I'm not going to... I'm not going to lie, uh, the, I'm just getting this business off the ground, but I do have years experience in booking these flights, both for friends, doing this unofficially, and in my last business where we were doing course content creation, and we would be flying almost as much as a consultant. I mean, we were putting in 20, 30,000 miles a year and flying other people out, so it was years and years of me doing this. So I'm not a rookie on this. I can definitely take care of you. And I really hope that you got some good value out of this course. So uh, here's how to connect with me. And if you want to talk with me for free, I'll give you a free 15-minute consultation. And we can have a nice chat if you're not ready to buy right now. But that $4.95 offer is only available right here on this page. So thanks for taking the time to learn about this stuff with me. And I'll see you guys soon. Hey, what's up guys? My name is James and I am the co-founder of Hirecar, as well as a few other e-commerce and SEO sites. I have been traveling the world for the past four to five years and I've known our good friend Freddie Lansky for about three of them. Um, Freddie has been a pivotal part of me traveling internationally for the past two years. Um, I have been bugging him pretty much every month uh, to help me find the best deals on business class flights because uh, I just I can't do economy when it comes to traveling uh, internationally. So Freddie has always helped me. He's probably saved me at least $100,000 uh, in the past two to three years on business class flights. And um, he's really good at finding this stuff. He really cares. He's obviously very passionate about it. And uh, I don't think you're gonna find a better person out there. I've used similar services and um, no one has ever gotten me the type of deals that Freddie has gotten me. So uh, definitely check into Points Panda and, uh, and give him a shot. I know you will not regret it. G'day, my name is Alex. I founded a website called homegrounds.co. It's for coffee lovers. And I've spent the past three years uh, traveling the world, working on my business, and goes without saying, I've caught a lot of flights in that time. The only business class flight I caught was recently um, Sydney to S Sydney to Singapore on Singapore Airlines business class. Um, and Freddie helped me hook that up. Um, as an Australian, I always hear about these points hacking situations going on and always just looked at it um, you know, in envy, but um, heard about Freddie's service and yeah, basically two days later, I had a business class flight to Singapore for a hundred bucks. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing many more. Thanks, Fred. Hey everybody, my name is Katie. Um, I'm an architect located in Denver. I've known Freddie for a long time now, probably 10 years, if not more, we met uh, back in college, but I always saw him traveling around the world and flying first class or business class and thought, wow, I wish I knew how to travel hack like Freddie. He seems like he's able to do this all so cheap and um, get these great flights. So when he offered his first offering for Points Panda, I jumped at the opportunity. Um, I travel a lot for work and for, for fun and um, I'm always trying to make the best deals happen so I can do as much travel as possible. I um, I realized that Freddie knows a lot more and, and was able to teach me about how to transfer points um, to the travel partners instead of booking on the online portal through just your regular credit card, something that you know, to me was very foreign, but to him was commonplace. So tips like that have, have made it, um, so I've been able to get a lot better deals. Um, and Freddie has been a great resource. I highly recommend it, um, for anybody who just likes to save money or 
loves to travel um, in the best way possible or as much as they can for a dollar. So I signed up with uh, Points Panda and Freddie when he first launched a few months ago now. And yeah, I've been very pleased with the results so far. I've used a bunch of services in the past and I would say they've generally been good, not great. Um, my experience with Points Panda so far has been great. Uh, I like it. The, what, what I like most about it, I think, is just the fact that it's unlimited travel consulting, which is great for somebody like me. Uh, I travel uh, about half the time with my girlfriend. We do a few long haul international flights a year. We like those to be business class. We generally pay in points, not cash for these tickets. And so knowing that, you know, over the next year, I'd have at least a few of these these uh, bookings coming up. Um, signing up for points panel was a no brainer for me. Um, and it's also been a no brainer in the sense that uh, I, I get unlimited uh, credit card consulting as well, which if you've ever um, taken a deep dive into that, you know, it can be a bit of a rabbit hole and a pain in the ass to figure out, you know, what card you should get, whether it's going to impact Chase's 524 rule, um, that sort of thing. So it's uh, what I like about points Panda. Freddie kicks me a card recommendation, you know, based on uh, what my current spend in, in my businesses is. And, um, you know, I can go out, get that without really having to do any of that research, which, yeah, I mean, for me, it's, I think it's pretty easy to, to see the, um, the, the time saved here. If I hey guys, want. my name is Ted Castro. I'm from San Francisco area. And I've been traveling as far as I can remember. But uh, when I met Freddie, uh, I've always been curious in how he travels in style. So I jumped into the opportunity when he came up with his startup, the Points Panda. And when I talked to him about it, I learned a lot in terms of the best deals that you can use as a power user. Um, which I thought I already knew, apparently not. So you always learn something new every day. Uh, but with Freddie, he knows how to travel in style and all the tricks of the trade, like the back of his palm. He also showed me um, the best credit card deals um, in terms of points, uh, in terms of which one is really good, which one is garbage. Um, he can tell you the difference. Um, the other thing that I learned from him as well is um, flying to Asia using your points will only cost you about 100,000 miles uh, if you want to travel business class. Uh, all the while I thought it would have taken me about 200,000 um, points. But Freddie knows it. So um, Points Panda will definitely help you travel in style. So. Um, better get in touch with Freddie. All right. Uh, he's the man.